गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन फ्रांस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन हैज प्रेजेंटेड इंटरिम बजट फॉर फाइनेंशियल ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव या सो द फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट इज वॉट इज रिलेवेंट इन दिस बजट फॉर यू पी एस एस्पेरेंट दिस इज द एजेंडा ऑफ आवर सेशन टू नाइट सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू कवर ईच एंड एवरी आइटम विच वॉज देयर इन द बजट ऑफ स्पीच नाइदर आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द बल्कि बजट डॉक्यूमेंट इन टोटैलिटी और अदर वी आर ओनली गोइंग टू कवर द सेक्शन और दैट टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स विच हैव बीन आस्ड इन द पास्ट बाई यू पी एस सी एंड विच हैव वेरी हाई प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ बींग आस्ड अगेन ओके सो इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड बाय मी इन योर क्लासेस इकोनॉमी यू वुड गेट सम सिमिलरिटी सम एस्पेक्ट वाज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड और ओनली अपडेशन ऑफ दोज एस्पेक्ट वुड बी डन विद दिस इयर्स बजट डॉक्यूमेंट ओके एंड वन मोर थिंग इज दैट सिंस ऑल ऑफ यू आर वाचिंग इट लाइव ऑनलाइन एज वेल इट्स नॉट ए प्रॉपर क्लासरूम काइंड ऑफ थिंग Uh, so I would be going a little faster, but definitely I would be addressing your doubts. I would request you again that you have to promptly give me the answers. Okay, all your uh, hands on keyboard only. In Article one hundred and twelve, we have annual financial statement, and I was telling you that in this annual financial statement, uh, we do not have the name budget. This you might have already studied that the word budget is not there in our constitution. okay the next thing that is there is that this annual financial statement is to be presented by the president of india so word finance minister is also not mentioned anywhere in our constitution okay so these are certain things uh, which you need to be aware now the second thing that this article 112 says is that the annual financial statement said clearly demarcate the revenue budget from capital budget revenue account and capital account ko alag se so kiya jayega okay this is one thing which is said and the second thing which is mentioned here is that in this article itself that there are certain expenditure which would be in the nature of charged expenditure can you tell me which of which are those charged expenditure which are those expenditure which are categorized as charged expenditure in our uh, constitution and for those charged expenditure you might be aware that charged expenditure are not voted in the lok sabha they are directly i mean uh, they are debated discussed but not voted so ineffectively the lok sabha does not have the power to restrict or decrease this expenditure so these are the statement which are there from press, uh, constitution itself then constitution has the next article yes interest payment is there uh, this uh, salary salary of the uh, uh, supreme court judges salary of the vice president of india president of india and the the a speaker and deputy speaker of lok sabha so these are the expenditure which is there in the part of charged expenditure if you are not able to recall it note down in your notes somewhere in the side that you have to remember this uh, charged expenditure part okay so budget see budget documents a directly question nahi aayega there is very less chances that a direct question would be asked what was there in the budget 2024 however there is very high probability that something which you will be able to recall i mean this is also a medium or a occasion for revision okay so a lot many things that we shall discuss uh, in today's session would be useful for your revision purposes go back and revise these things as well then we shall go to article 113 article 113 mentions about demand for grant this is part of expenditure okay uh, then we have article 114 this mentions about appropriation bill so appropriation bill is separate thing demand for grant is separate thing appropriation bill is holistically the whole annual financial statement uh, the expenditure part of annual financial statement is called appropriation bill 
but this appropriation will consist of a lot many small grants okay and all those individual grants are discussed one after another and then uh, th this provision is mentioned in article 113 in this year budget there were 102 demands for grant okay so usually this is norm this is not always true i am again saying it usually there is one demand for grant for every department but again i am saying for some departments there could be more than one demand for grant as well so this is how uh, this is at the constitutional scheme then there is something called 110 1a this mentions about finance bill but you might be wondering is sir 110 article is about money bill this says that all the items mentioned in article 110 they would be part of money bill so now from here we can make the conclusion that finance bill is also a kind of money bill what is finance bill finance bill is counterpart of appropriation bill appropriation bill is about expenditure finance bill is about income finance bill is different from financial bill financial bill is similar to money bill finance bill is simply one of the variety of money bill okay so go and also read the difference between finance bill and financial bill okay now there is something called vote on account which is mentioned in article 116 and uh, few days before the budget uh, our finance minister nirmala sitaraman has given a statement uh, that this interim budget is not of uh, much uh, much uh, concern uh, because this is just a vote on account well she was technically not right we got vote on account just have the expenditure part and that too for a limited period of time whereas as you might have already seen or i will show you in this current session that this interim budget that we have has both income as well as expenditure part we will see how the government has shown income part as well so first difference between interim budget and vote on account is that this vote on account has only expenditure interim budget has both then vote on account is only for the limited period say two months or four months in fact in this uh, in her speech Nirmala Sitarman did not make it clear for how many months she is asking for uh, vote on account okay it would be known I mean maybe in detail reading it, it would be available uh, whereas interim budget as such has all the data for the whole financial year this is also something which is a common misconception that interim budget has only data or provisions for uh, say two months or three months that's not true if a new government is not able to take uh, uh, i mean is able to uh, come to power it may happen that there is a hung parliament in that case these provisions which were part of this interim budget will continue uh, to be in force for the whole of the financial year vote on account is mentioned in our constitution article 116 whereas interim budget this word is nowhere mentioned in our constitution now let's move to the next aspect that is a structure of our budget now as we have already seen that our constitution says that each demand of grant would be categorized into voted expenditure and charged expenditure second part is between revenue expenditure and capital expenditure and the third is grand total so it's i demand for grant as i have told you that there are 102 of them and all of them would be categorized into two part voted expenditure and charge expenditure revenue expenditure and capital expenditure and then the grand total this is how the whole budget is categorized now if we look at the ministry wise so for any ministry there is the total expenditure now this total expenditure would be either center government expenditure or some money would be transferred to a state or union territory okay these are this is the two possible either central government spends it on its own or it spends 
through uh, some state of unitarity and one more thing all the central government expenditure would be part of expenditure by some ministry it cannot happen the expenditure is happening by and uh, which is not part of any ministry so all expenditure would fall in the expenditure of some ministry and ministry can do it either on its own or through by transferring it to the state or union territory now the own expenditure could be either establishment expenditure like the salaries of the is officer i mean your salary that will come so uh, salary of running this department or ministry second is central sector schemes there are various central sector schemes are there those schemes are running one of uh, give me some example of central sector schemes the third would be some central public sector enterprises their expenditure or some autonomous bodies their expenditure so all this will be part of centers expenditure then transfer to a state union territory this could be through centrally sponsored scheme or through finance commission transfer or some other kind of transfer like uh, to the state like some grants are given a special status is given all such things are there which comes under part of transfer to a state union territory so this is how the whole budget is categorized i did not get any answer from you people oh mg narega is not a central sector scheme mg narega is centrally a sponsored scheme here mg narega would form pm kisan will form here will fall here now in any budget there is data for three financial years this is a very standard question which can be asked or this is also asked in interview as well chalo i will show you later the first is the data for the coming financial year okay yeah please check a lot of good answers are there uh, which you people are uh, sending to me uh, see the simple concept is that if a state government is also involved for example pm awas yojana is a centrally a sponsored scheme because in this scheme there is a state government contribution as well okay but if a state government contribution is not there there is no role for the state government vis a vis financial matters okay that scheme is only central sector scheme okay now uh, let's come to this there are three years data one is the data that you see which is called as you can see first is data which is called budget estimate here this word budget estimate would be written this is for the next year next financial year budget this budget is for 2024 25 so budget estimate is for 2024 25 then there would be revised estimate for last year data because last year also some budget was presented but uh, through the course of the financial year the government may realize that probably we are not going to achieve the target or probably we need to spend more money for example in mg narega they have oversought the last year's uh, assessment it might happen uh, that in mg narega the demand is more because there was a drought so if the more because it's a guarantee so government would have to incur the expenditure so government revises its last year estimate in this year budget okay but uh, still as on today even on 1st of february 2024 uh, the financial year 2023 24 is not complete that financial year is still going on so that's why its actual numbers the actual expenditure would only be known in next year budget so last to last year's actual numbers are also presented here now this financial year 2022-23 is now complete it was completed on 31st march 2023 so now this data is also presented in this year budget is it clear is there any confusion then let me know that there are three years data and all these data are different from each each other they are not same one is about actual data one is revised estimate this was last year data so this is not a new data this is new data this is new data is it clear just let me know 
and this i have uh, just simply taken in for an example purposes like uh, demand number 1 is for department of agriculture and farmer welfare okay and uh, in this case there is first center expenditure as i have told you then within center expenditure there is establishment expenditure central sector schemes there would be third as well and then there would be uh, this transfer to the state so the the mechanism that i just conveyed to you that this is how whole budget is structured same you can witness here as well now here i will also show you one more thing like last revised estimate is also around uh, say for ca in case of uh, demand number 1 uh, it is 116000 this year they are presenting 117000 so this gives us a picture that this estimate although it's an interim budget the estimate is for the full financial year okay so in case it may happen for any reason that the new government is not able to take shape or new government does not present a uh, full fledged budget after the election then this budget would be effective for whole of the financial year okay there is no uh, expiry date of this interim budget so the purpose of showing all these things is that you should be able to visualize how this budget document is how this budget is prepared how Uh, different uh, scheme expenditure are there i do not want you to memorize any of these data only you have to understand uh, make a picture clear in your mind how this different data are categorized okay uh, whatever you need to memorize i will tell you so do not worry that's my duty <clears throat> now we shall come to this part what is the expenditure and what is the income that's the whole thing about the, that's the crux of the budget okay uh, one more thing is there that this was an interim budget okay so uh, this was less of a budget more of a report card of the government and a report card was also like the uh, in whole of the budget speech our finance minister keep on comparing what we did in 10 years and what they did before that we versus them was the whole a speech so all the data that we have is in this format only here how as an uh, upsc aspirant how we are going to utilize this data so we are going to utilize it in the way uh, that few of the schemes are important one few of the schemes are on the basis of certain themes which are part of upsc syllabus we would have to memorize those data only that we would be able to show that this is the growth that we have achieved in last 10 years in exam we are not going to compare okay we are not a bjp candidate in lok sabha election right so we are not going to compare what was achievement in this 10 year vis a vis last 10 year we are going to remember that these are our achievement wherever we have to show that we are growing we will use those figures okay uh, navneet giri has a doubt what uh, please explain what is interim budget interim budget is a budget presented by a government in transition so if a government believes that it is not going to complete the full financial year it brings about an interim budget that the full budget would be presented later on okay so this is like this budget would be superseded by another budget in this financial year itself that's why by convention government is giving the name interim budget okay so like this budget is going to be i mean the uh, finance minister has itself announced that we will be presenting a new budget after the election they are confident that they are going to come to the power okay uh, so since this budget is going to be superseded by another budget this is a interim budget interim matlab for the time being so for the time being we have presented a budget major changes would happen later on is it clear navneet <clears throat> what is the difference uh, this is good doubt i was expecting it to be asked this numbers which are presented here budget 2023 24 these are the data which was given in last year budget so last year when finance minister has presented the budget she has proposed that the total expenditure would be uh, 115531 crore okay whereas actual expenditure that has happened is 116788 crore so actual can always be different itna bada desh hai 
डेफिनेटली देर वुड बी सम डिफरेंस जो आप प्लान करोगे एक साल में उतना हो जरूरी नहीं है ठीक है सो दिस वॉज लास्ट ईयर डेटा विच वॉज प्रेजेंटेड इन द बजट विन बजट वॉज प्रेजेंटेड एंड नाउ द डेटा स्टैंड रिवाइज नेक्स्ट ईयर आई मीन आफ्टर देयर इज टू मंथ स्टिल लेफ्ट इन दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर सो इन टू मंथ हो सकता है कि ये वन लैख सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड के बजाय वन लैख सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड हो जाए ओके सो इन नेक्स्ट ईयर द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर वुड प्रेजेंट द एक्चुअल बजट एंड इन एक्चुअल एक्चुअल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर द नंबर वुड चेंज टू वन लैख सेवेंटीन थाउजेंड ओके सो दिस इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ बजट एस्टिमेट दिस वॉज लास्ट ईयर बजट एस्टिमेट एंड दिस इज रिवाइज एस्टिमेट दिस वर्ड यू विल सी आर ई रिवाइज एस्टिमेट ओके नाउ इज इट क्लियर योगेश Yes, vote on account is part of every budget. Uh, usually, uh, for last uh, three years, a vote on account was not being presented. Since we have started uh, presenting our budget on first of February, uh, the vote of account was not required. So that's why, uh, for last few years, vote on account was not coming. This year, vote on account is there. So, finance minister in her speech, she has mentioned that I also be needing a vote on account. now let's see from uh, where does government do this expenditure okay now the biggest element see all these numbers you need not memorize what you need to memorize is that the biggest element in this expenditure is the first is a, a state share of taxes and duties now this is not relevant because this is mostly based on the finance minister uh, uh, like uh, sorry finance commission recommendation nothing much can be done now the most important thing is that biggest element is interest payment now you please tell me whether interest payment falls in revenue account or capital account or rather it is a revenue expenditure or capital expenditure now the uh, next biggest item after the interest payment is uh, if you look at this central sector scheme the third biggest there is i mean there are uh, this other item this which are clubbed so this is not important the important is that uh, finance commission transfer and other transfer okay so this is uh, being said uh, separately uh, finance commission as you might be remembering that finance commission recommends about this state government share as the same time a state government some transfer is also recommended so the, they are being put separately yes you are right revenue expenditure now the third most important is like defense has same amount of expenditure as centrally a sponsored scheme if not same similar so defense and centrally sponsored schemes uh, are uh, joint third and then comes the subsidies so this ranking you need to memorize okay this if you remember like pensions are a uh, yeah, small portion and they are going to reduce further because we have gone into new pension scheme okay so this is what you need to remember now what is the total size of budget this is something that question that should have come to your mind how much does government spend and the number is 47.66 lakh crore so the budget 2024 25 the government proposes that in this financial year we shall be doing 47.66 lakh crore expenditure theek hai just itna likh lo i mean i will be sharing this ppt okay don't worry i will be sharing this ppt on my telegram channel so from that uh, there you can download it and the link of telegram channel is there in the description of the video uh, just listen to me because see this is the graph which i have uh, taken from the government's budget document itself so government has made this uh, graph and uh, see one more thing is problematic here like this centrally sponsored scheme 8% uh, seems as big as this state share 20% so probably government has not carefully made this diagram uh, i have simply taken from there only 
ठीक है अदर एक्सपेंडिचर इज एक्चुअली क्लब्ड टूगेदर देर आर मेनी एक्सपेंडिचर विच हैव बीन कलेक्टिवली क्लब्ड एज अदर एक्सपेंडिचर दैट्स वाई इट्स नॉट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ओके देर इज वन मोर थिंग विच इज देयर द गवर्नमेंट हैज कम अप विद ए स्कीम नाउ द स्कीम इज दैट द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वुड प्रोवाइड फिफ्टी ईयर इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन फॉर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर हु वुड गेट दिस लोन अ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट so the center government would give loan to the state government which would be interest free means the state government would not have to pay any interest on this and the state government can only spend this loan for some kind of capital expenditure and the repayment period is also very high that is 50 year 50 now can you explain me if you can understand it uh, what is the clever thing which has been done here this is effectively a kind of i mean if you are given money uh, on which you do not have to pay interest you will uh, i mean uh, immediately take that money because if you have taken 100 rupee today and you are uh, returning 100 rupee after 50 years effectively probably you are only returning 10 rupees because 50 year down the line the 10 rupee today will have the same value as 100 rupees 50 year down the line okay so effectively it's a kind of grant which is given by the central government okay but since it's a kind of loan it would come under the capital expenditure of central government okay so earlier central government used to say that there is something called effective revenue deficit what was the argument of central government that some part of this grant given to the state government is used for capital expenditure so that should be that should not be counted as revenue deficit because that is actually a capital expenditure so government say that let's be a smarter people are not buying this idea so why don't you simply convert this revenue expenditure into capital expenditure so government has very smartly central government has converted a revenue expenditure into capital expenditure this is a kind of grant only but now that it is a loan it would be counted under capital expenditure are you able to understand this if you are able to understand this this has a lot of economic concept in its it it has the concept of time value of money it has the concept of what kind of expenditure is in revenue expenditure what is capital expenditure so if you are able to understand this you have understood economics very well just let me know if you have understood it and maybe in one or two days uh, the hindu will point it out i have pointed it out earlier <laughs> the hindu will also definitely point it out one more thing that i would like to say that uh, in budget uh, what uh, everything that you will be seeing in the tomorrow's newspaper is positive only because this is something which is presented by the government and government is always going to uh, which is said like ki dood ki nadiyan baha rahe hain ठीक है ऑल गुड थिंग्स बट द डे इज आफ्टर दैट वेन लाइक इट इज सेट डेविल्स लाइज इन डिटेल सो वेन डिटेल वुड बी डिग अप बाई वेरियस न्यूज पेपर इंडियन एक्सप्रेस द हिंदू दे विल कम अप विद दिस काउंटर आर्ग्यूमेंट ठीक है चलो नक्षत्र डिड नॉट गेट इट आई एम सिंपली एक्सप्लेनिंग इट सी वेन इट इज ए फिफ्टी ईयर इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन इफेक्टिवली इट इज ए ग्रांट because if you are getting 100 rupee today and you are returning it after 50 year without any interest payment effectively after 50 year probably you are returning only 10 rupees so kind of you have got 90 rupees as grant so when government central government gives grant it is counted as revenue expenditure and it is central government is criticized that your revenue expenditure is high your revenue deficit is high whereas capital deficit is generally considered good thing so central government has simply converted its revenue expenditure into capital expenditure why giving a 50 year interest free loan to the state government okay yes it will uh, i mean theoretically the government debt would increase but since it, the debt is of a very long duration 
देर इज नो फाइनेंशियल स्टेबिलिटी इशू एंड दिस इज एन इंटरनल डेट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू अ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सो दैट इन फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल देर इज नो सच इशू नेक्स्ट एस्पेक्ट Uh, this is the data that government has said that the revenue expenditure of the government has continuously increased in absolute terms. Okay, actual expenditure, budget estimate, which was the estimate last year, and a revised estimate, and this year budget estimate. So the government is estimating that this year the revenue expenditure would be more. The government has also come up with this term. I mean, it's not a new term, but this year it has been highlighted. Uh, effective capital expenditure okay so this is normal capital expenditure here i would like to say uh, one thing like like the government is doing some smart thing let's we also do something a smart thing in budget you have to look for 3t first is terms if there is new terms new terms means something which is not very much uh, which you have not studied okay because the term is not new probably you were not unknown you were not aware of this so first t is terms second t is trends if there is any trend which is being followed or not followed and the third third thing is turbulence like where is government bringing about some change those are the areas from where upsc asks questions so you have to look for these three t's now first this term effective capital expenditure if you do not know please write it down it is the sum of capital expenditure capital expenditure is also called capex plus the expend capital expenditure done by state government from centers grant okay so it's like grant which is given for asset creation so if a grant is given for asset creation that should be ideally counted as capital expenditure because this expenditure is used for asset creation but since it's a grant it is counted as revenue uh, expenditure so this is effective capital expenditure and you can say that there is no consistent trend a uh, consistent trend in the sense that uh, from budget estimate the effect revised estimate says that effective capital expenditure has reduced so the government government has surpassed its revenue expenditure estimate whereas it has missed its capital expenditure estimates so government has not done enough capital expenditure okay this is the analysis that you should note that was vis a vis last year budget estimate the government surpassed its revenue expenditure but not able to meet its effective capital expenditure more importantly this definition is important this can be asked ja yeah, sandhya i i completely echo your feeling and more so uh, when i will be discussing the taxation aspect sandhya is saying that uh, it's the middle class which watches the debate more eagerly and gets nothing theek okay. hai next this is like allocation of different ministries which minister has got how much of money and the biggest gainer is ministry of defense minister of defense has got 6.2 lakh crore minister of defense is the largest employer as well largest employer in india is also ministry of defense okay ministry of road transport and highway is the second one Ministry of Road, Transport and uh, Highway has got 2.78 lakh crore. The Ministry of Railway comes at the third. Then not important. ठीक है तो top two three हमें import याद रखना है ये number भी हमें याद नहीं रखने numbers are not important. Only ranking is important. Now let's move to the next part. Okay. Now we shall move to the income part. From where does government get the income? Now the government, uh, the total receipt that the government gets, the one could be uh, this borrowing, another could be non-borrowing. So debt and non-debt. First criteria between the source of income is this. What is how much is government's debt? Debt is same as borrowing. 
which is also as deficit which total we call at fiscal deficit okay and then there's non net non debt can be in two category one is revenue another is capital give me few examples which are the rev uh, revenue receipt items and which are the capital receipt item few example please give till the time i will uh, tell the other things so you tell me this is like borrowing and other liabilities ye capital mein jayega revenue mein jayega so borrowing and other liabilities whatever they are coming this would come since it's a change in asset and liability that's the definition so it would be part of capital account okay then all these this is some other non debt capital receipts so this will also go to capital account all these other taxes taxes go into revenue account theek hai simple sa cheez hai taxes go into revenue so this is also revenue this is income tax excise tax corporation tax gst and other tax custom duty and other non tax receipts are, are also revenue receipts Okay, so if we if you do simple uh, simple uh, addition, it is like only twenty eight plus one twenty nine percent is capital receipt. So revenue receipt is much more than capital receipt. This is the first conclusion that we can draw that revenue receipt is much more than capital receipt. The second thing that we can draw is we need to draw is whether direct taxes are more or indirect taxes are more. okay so let's see direct taxes income tax and corporation tax these two are direct taxes their sum total is 46% this is direct taxes no 36% sorry now indirect taxes 5% 18% 18 or 5 23 23 and 4 27 so indirect taxes are 27% so here direct taxes is also more than indirect taxes in fact this year there is one term which has come uh, which has been used tax buoyancy so in case of direct taxes the government has witnessed tax buoyancy there is very high growth in direct tax collection okay i will also make you write down the definition of tax buoyancy don't worry so the direct tax collection has increased very rapidly in this financial year so now the gap between direct taxes and indirect taxes are growing okay still from both these aspect like income tax or corporate tax or any other taxation this borrowing is the largest item most of our expenditure is done through borrowing so first item is borrowing second item is which is the second one income tax third item is gst and fourth item is corporation tax rest of the things are small need not remember so this ranking can also be asked this is something that you have to memorize first is borrowing if borrowing is not given in the list the first is income tax second is gst third is corporation tax okay and then uh, at the fourth position there are non tax receipts uh between excise and custom also you need to memorize that excise is more than custom so custom is imposed on the import and export excise is on usually from the petroleum products so we have more taxes on petroleum goods so excise duty collection is more than the custom duty collection okay now if we lo uh, look at the government tax collection data what is the uh, government is saying uh, government is saying that in case of gst the tax collection has grown consistently although although in the uh, announcement it was that it has consistently grown but we can see that in financial year 21 this was the covid year uh, where the average 
collection has gone down then since then it has been continuously increasing so if a statement comes that the average monthly gst collection has been continuously increasing for last 5 years would it be right or wrong the statement is average monthly gst collection has been continuously increasing for last 5 years right or wrong it's wrong okay you are right that it is not continuously increasing for last 5 year in the four four year before in financial year 21 it has reduced okay there was there was this uh, question ki if uh, interim budget is not presented uh, is not given in the constitution on where what basis it is presented so the constitution says that you have to present budget now whether this budget would be interim budget or normal budget is uh, like convention this convention has been developed by the uh, government now the next thing is that dire uh, government has given a data about direct tax collection that the direct tax collection has tripled direct tax collection has tripled since 2014 i mean three times bad gaya hai and the number of taxpayer this number has become 2.4 times in last 10 years so this is the data that you can use whenever there is a question about uh, uh, tax evasion tax avoidance or black money that in recent times the government has been able to crack down on tax evasion the number of taxpayer has been increasing and so is the direct tax collection and that's why you can also use that now the gap between direct tax and indirect tax collection is also increasing and on this front i would also like to say that there has been no change in tax structure in this year budget the government did not make any change in tax structure which whatever was there last year in fact the exemption or special grants that have been given to the startups that has also been continued in this uh, year budget so there is no change in tax structure in this year budget theek hai uh, one more thing that government has said is that the state governments have witnessed tax buancy tax buancy is simply like uh, see normally if gdp is growing so your tax collection will also uh, grow <laughs> yes mega you are right ed ke khauf se jo hai <laughs> tax collection bad gaya hai <laughs> so normally if your tax collection is uh, gdp is growing simply uh, gdp is growing means income is growing so income is growing a certain percentage of that income will go to the government so the government tax collection will also grow okay but if it so happens that gdp is growing by say uh, 8% and the tax collection grows by say 10% we call such a scenario as tax buancy when the, G, the the tax collection by the government grows at a higher rate than the tax collected by than the gdp growth this is called tax buancy now this is something which can be asked and finance minister has said that the state gst revenue has witnessed tax buancy a state gst revenue has uh, witnessed tax buancy and the tax buancy which was in pre gst period in pre gst period that the tax buancy was 0.72 in gst regime or what you will call sgst regime the tax buancy has been 1.22 okay so because of this the finance minister was giving the argument that gst is a good reform that we have brought however see uh, we would have to see i mean the devils will lie into the detail uh, like because uh, in this there has also been in this gst period there has also been a period when we have witnessed negative growth rate in 2020 okay so we would have to see that in post 2020 post uh, post covid period what where there has been any 
tax buoyancy or not the period that matter is after uh, financial year 2021 okay and so these things will come into the uh, the hindu editorial in uh, the upcoming week don't worry about that the next aspect is the one word which has been used in this year budget like uh, finance minister has not made any changes uh, but rather finance minister has said uh, that these are also the good things that we have done one is presumptive taxes and this is the word so if we look at the conceptual aspect of presumptive taxation the conceptual aspect the economic concept is there that if there is a tax which is not on the actual income rather on the presumption that you have had an income that would be called presumptive taxation okay that there is a presumption that you have had an income that's why you are being taxed okay now in income tax act there has been certain provi provisions for presumptive taxation so pre uh, one of the example that we if you if we look uh, look at this simple concept of presumptive taxation one of the very best example is minimum alternate tax in minimum alternate tax the government says that see uh, you have to simply pay tax on your book profit minimum 18% tax aap hame de do baki aap jo karna hai karo now presumptive taxation is also that a kind of simplification so like if there is a professional like jo doctors are there advocates are there uh, so they are they are not act, acting as an individual they are acting as a kind of doing some kind of a business okay they have to ha maintain a office there is an expenditure for maintenance of office they have to ha hire some staff okay so in actual sense what should happen is that they have some revenue they have some expenditure on maintaining that office and whatever is their profit they should be able uh, this should be made to pay taxes on that profit okay uh, but for an individual professional it make it can become a burdensome task so government say that let's simplify this regime rather than paying taxes uh, or rather than going into all this detailing you will we will presume that you have had certain income and based on that presumption you will have to pay tax so there are two broad categories of presumptive taxation which are there in income tax act yes 44 ad and there are other sections as well those sections are not important so that's why i am not telling you this concept of presumptive taxation is important and their statement can be asked that whether this is a part of income tax act or this is a part of gst act or some other custom duty act or some other act would be mentioned okay so this is part of income tax act this is a kind of direct taxation now uh, small retail businesses they have to pay some taxes so for them it would be presumed that if their uh, say business is less than 3 crore rupees okay so this was increased from 2 crore to 3 crore so simply they have to say that if they are doing the total business of 3 crore up to 3 crore 8% of that business is their profit it would be assumed so if i have done a business of 1 crore rupees it would be presumed that 8 lakh is my profit and i will pay tax on 8 lakh rupees okay now the next is uh, for case of individual professionals uh the limit was earlier 50 lakh which was increased to 75 lakh so like for example if a professional uh, is there and that professional is uh, say uh, doing a business of say 60 lakh rupees okay so for professional the profit would be considered as 50% so simply it would be presumed that his profit is say 30 lakh rupees and he will have to pay income tax on this 30 lakh rupees only he need not maintain a book and account to show that his profit is 30 lakh it is presumed that his profit is 40 lakh so that's why the nomenclature presumptive taxation is it now clear subham so it is not on income rather on profit theek hai so it is presumed that if you are making some income you are making profit as well that is the presumption and since these are the income which are in i mean usually on businesses uh, there is tax on profit only 
it is only the salaried class that's why this middle class is not happy with the government because we have to pay uh, taxes on our income and then we have to do expenditure and when we do expenditure then also we have to pay gst so we are just paying taxes all round whereas the businesses or the business class they have they subtract their expenditure first and then from profit they pay taxes yes yes sima you are right that if there is a digital receipt then this 8% reduces further to 6% i mean we are not preparing for income tax na so that's why i'm not going to that detail that is not important even this 8% is not important important is this concept of presumptive taxation theek hai and aur zara detail mein gaye to ye hoga कि वेदर इट इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन सम प्रोफेशनल्स एंड स्मॉल बिजनेसेस और बिग बिजनेसेस वो गलत स्टेटमेंट बनाने के लिए दे विल राइट दैट इट इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन बिग कॉर्पोरेट दैट्स नॉट ट्रू इट इज ऑन अ स्मॉल बिजनेसेस ऑन विच इट इज एप्लीकेबल ठीक है सो इट्स इट्स गुड सीमा दैट यू हैव प्रिपेयर दिस थिंग्स इन डिटेल नाउ लेट्स दीज आर द कंसेप्ट पार्ट दीज कंसेप्ट कैन बी आस्ट डोंट वरी अबाउट द मैथ नॉट नॉट important important is only concept and the terminologies uh next is revenue receipt and capital receipt the uh, income part if we uh, go to that uh as you can see as we have already seen that in the direct taxes we have witnessed buoyancy so what we were expecting 26.3 lakh crore now we are expecting that it would be surpassed and we will uh, generate Uh, revenue of around 27 lakh crore okay and next year we are even more optimistic next year we are saying that our revenue would be around 30 lakh crore in case of capital receipt front uh, we had estimated 18.7 lakh crore but uh, actual we are now saying that we would only be having the capital receipt of 17.9 lakh crore now it is uh, please tell me whether it this reduction of capital receipt is good or bad and if so why so whatever be your reasoning whether it is good or bad what is the reason behind this uh, we will also have a part of this session tomorrow uh so tomorrow 9 pm also we shall uh, meet uh, the link would be different but i would post that link on my telegram channel atmanirbhar no see this it is simple see government is government has to do a total expenditure of say 100 rupees out of this 100 rupees government was having his its own revenue of say 80 rupees and then 20 rupees is something that government has to borrow this borrowing is part of capital receipt now this 80 as we have seen here 80 has increased by 1 so probably 80 has increased to 81 so the government needs to borrow less the government now needs to borrow only 19 rupees so if this has increased commensurately this has reduced or so this is probably this has increased by say 0.7 lakh crore and this has reduced by 0.8 lakh crore so similar amount is there okay so only thing that you have to digest is that this capital receipt also includes the borrowing and so the government's borrowing has reduced in fact in fiscal deficit also the government has a fiscal deficit target of 5. 9% of gdp but the, now it is saying that this year the fiscal deficit would only be 5.8% why because less amount of borrowing has been done because the direct tax collection has been more so it is not bad per se it would have been bad had had there been uh, say uh, i mean Uh, you got to look into the detail rather ki what is the reason why there is less of capital receipts okay so capital receipt would be borrowing only it would be kind of loan 
other capital receipt could be if you are selling the share of some companies okay so that is also a kind of reduction in asset so either there would be reduction in asset or there would be increase in liability these are only two ways through which you can have capital receipt so high amount of capital receipt is also not good तो ये थोड़ा सा काउंटर प्रोडक्टिव है जो काउंटर प्रोडक्टिव नहीं काउंटर इंट्यूटिव है जो हमें कॉमन सेंस से लगता है उसका उल्टा है सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल नेक्स्ट ईयर वी आर फर्दर एमबीसीएस दैट नाउ द कैपिटल रिसीट वुड फर्दर रिड्यूस बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू गो टू द पाथ ऑफ फिजिकल कंसोलिडेशन ओके देर इज दिस वर्ड फिजिकल कंसोलिडेशन सो फिजिकल कंसोलिडेशन मीन्स नट सेल में आप मानो दट द गवर्नमेंट इज रिड्यूसिंग द फिजिकल डेफिसिट सो ड्यूरिंग कोविड द फिजिकल डेफिसिट हैज रीच टू नाइन पॉइंट टू परसेंटेज ऑफ जी डी पी नाउ द गवर्नमेंट सेज दैट बाई फाइनेंशियल ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी सिक्स the fiscal deficit would be 4.5% of gdp so now we are continuously every year reducing our fiscal deficit okay the next thing that the government has said that this year as compared to our target that we have set in our budget which was 5.9% fiscal deficit would be 5.8 Eight percent only. Now you understand why the fiscal deficit has reduced. This is very uncommon. Normally, fiscal deficit is always oversuit the uh, target. But this year, it has not oversuit because our tax collection has been high. There has been tax buoyancy. Now we have put a target. This target can often be asked of five point one percent of GDP in. this financial year 2024 25 in this financial year so this year 5.8 we are going to achieve next year 5.1 and next to next year we will reach 4.5% sajal is asking a doubt ki how more capital receipt won't be good see कैपिटल अकाउंट इज बाय डेफिनेशन देर इज ए चेंज इन एसेट और लाइबिलिटी दिस इज इफ देर इज ए चेंज इन एसेट और लाइबिलिटी देर इज गोइंग टू बी दिस ट्रांजेक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी रिकॉर्डेड इन कैपिटल अकाउंट नाउ देर इज रिसीट रिसीट मीन्स मनी हैज बीन रिसीव्ड बाय गवर्नमेंट मनी रिसीव्ड now when will government receive the money if government takes a loan there is increase in liability or government can sell something to so government has an asset which government sold and in return government received the money so either there is going to be reduction in asset or there is going to be increase in liability these are the two possibility under which there is going to be capital receipt now if either of the two is high it is not good if you are selling a lot of asset a lot of reduction in your asset column that is also not good because if asset is reducing your future income is going to be jeopardized at the same time if you are taking too much of loan that is also not good because too much of loan ultimately future generation have to pay so ultimately if there is a high capital receipt today the probably future generation is going to be burdened either their source of income is going to be curtailed by reduction in asset or they have to do a lot of future repayment of loan which current government is taking so after a point of time it may not remain sustainable a small amount of capital receipt would always be there theek hai we always have this fiscal deficit we have also you, you might already be have, have discussed it that uh, a developing country will always have a deficit budget 
सो दैट्स ऑल दैट वी विल बी हैविंग इन टूडेज सेशन इन टुमारो सेशन वी सेल बी कवरिंग अबाउट वेरियस एस्पेक्ट ऑफ वेरियस स्कीम्स एंड ऑल दोज डिटेल दैट फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज टॉक्ड अबाउट विकसित भारत सम अमाउंट ऑफ स्कीम्स एटसेट्रा दैट वी सेल बी डिस्कसिंग Uh, in tomorrow's session so tune in tomorrow 9 pm as well okay and if you have not liked the channel do subscribe to my youtube channel uh, do like this video and share this video with as many people as possible welfare motive also compromises government role decreases with reduction in capital uh, asset also compromises government role decreases with reduction in capital asset uh, well that may or may not be true you are probably saying that the government takes loan uh, to do the welfare activities so if government is not taking as much of loan uh, uh, welfare expenditure but uh, in our case the government has reduced this uh, loan uh, by increasing its income so this is a good thing if capital receipt is reducing because there is more tax revenue that is good finance but if it has happened because uh, there is less of capital expenditure then that would have been a kind of bad finance okay however it has also happened we have seen also when expenditure uh, revenue expenditure and effective capital expenditure we were discussing we have also seen that in case of effective capital expenditure also government has revised its target downward whereas in case of revenue expenditure government has oversought its estimate so on that front government has not done well normally if it had happened that revenue expenditure has decreased and capital expenditure has increased that was good thing because capital expenditure is leading to asset creation increase in future income theek hai kafi sari cheeze maine hawa hawa mein bol di hai to ye agar nahi samajh mein aaya hai to pause karke dobara play kar lena hai aur piche ka video ja kar ke dekhna hai theek hai us video mein aapko clarity aa jayegi the ppt would be shared on my telegram channel the link of my telegram channel is there in the description of the video see you again tomorrow night good night take care uh one more thing if you have any doubt left you can always put in the comment section we can discuss i would be happy to reply all your doubts